Okay, we're gonna have two purple videos uh, for a hydraulics unit. And the first one, today's topic, or this video, will cover um, the relationship between force, pressure, and area, and just looking at basic braking systems. And I'd like to first think about the concept of pressure. So when we think about pressure, what you're doing is you're, you're concentrating the force. How many pounds are you applying per square inch? So if you hold force the same, if, if I can only push you with so much force, the smaller the area I apply that force over, then the higher the pressure will be. So let's look over at our topless guy here. And uh, we can see that if I push on his arm with my finger, nothing's going to happen. Say I'm applying 10 pounds of force to his finger. I'm just going to kind of irritate him. However, if I decrease the area that I'm applying that force through, like a needle tip, you know you're going to puncture his arm. Okay, so that force concentration, higher pressure. And we can use this relationship in a couple of places in automotive applications. And the main one that we talk about is our braking system, our hydraulic brakes. So there's a couple things we can do when we start. We'll talk about right here when you are stepping on the brake pedal. We're going to talk about mechanical advantages so that we can increase the foot force we apply with our foot. And then we go through an input rod with a certain force and we apply that force to a hydraulic fluid. Now, the fluid in the system, so if I were to color it all kind of red, the pressure that I give that fluid is the same everywhere in the system. So I can mess with some factors, such as the area of our output calipers or pistons in order to multiply force coming out at the rear brakes. Likewise, I can mess with the area of the master cylinder to have a pressure gauge gain sorry, from the force that I'm applying with my foot. And I can do all these calculations with one basic formula. So a little bit of a break from the relentless variety of formulas that we were seeing with horsepower and torque calculations. So we have force, which will be in pounds for now, is equal to pressure in PSI, pounds per square inch, or just to make a good visual, pounds per inch squared, multiplied by area, which I always want to be in inch squared. So we see that those two will cancel out and leave pounds equals pounds, so that will work out. It's another one of these ones you can use the magic triangle for. So we're looking over here, we have the FPA, where this kind of is a multiplying line between the P and the A. And we have a dividing line from the top to the bottom of the triangle. And we use the same kind of trick where if you take, bear with me here, ah, <laughs> you take uh, whatever you're solving for and cover it up. So if I want to find force, this triangle tells me that the math I need to do is pressure times area. If I want to find area, I need to take force and divide it by pressure. And if I want to find pressure, I need to take force and divide it by area. So there they all are. Okay, so an area is going to be force divided by pressure, and a pressure is going to be force divided by area. So looking at a, a very simple hydraulic system here, we're going to ignore the concept of height. I don't care about that for this. So let's say that this is a master cylinder and we are applying 25 pounds of force, a very big master cylinder, <laughs> across an area of 10, to 10 inches square. So I want to figure out what the pressure in the fluid that creates. So I know that if I want to find pressure, I am going to look at my triangle and I need to take force and divide it by area. So we're going to take 25 divided by 10, and we're going to get 2.5 pounds per square inch PSI. Okay, so we have the same pressure everywhere in this fluid. So the great thing about these hydraulic fluids or any fluid, they don't compress and they transmit equal pressure everywhere in. So we've got this pressure, an increased pressure across a bigger area. So we want to find out what the force out is, and this might represent something like your front brake calipers or your rear cylinders if you're using drums or rear calipers, whatever have you. 
So the output for us, let's put it in a different color, is going to be the system pressure that we created with that 25 pounds of here. That system pressure was 2.5. Let's write down the formula first. Multiplied by the area that it's acting on. 40 inches squared. And we're going to get a force coming out of 100 pounds. All right, so heading over to a couple typical math questions you might see dealing with force, pressure, and area. So number one, we've got a servo piston in an automatic transmission. So we're talking transmission fluid this time. That's all good. Um, the piston area is 3.5 inches. We've got an area and we've got a pressure. So we're solving for a force and we know that force is equal to pressure times area. Check your units. The pressure is 250 PSI, so that's the right unit. The area is already found. It's 3.5, simple multiplication, and we're gonna get 875 pounds of force are created in that situation. Looking at number two, we're solving for P. We know that pressure equals force over area. We've got a force, that's great, 950 pounds, but we're given a diameter instead of an area, no big. It's a piston, let's assume it's a circle. A equals pi r squared equals 3.14. If the diameter is 2.8, the radius is 1.4, and we're gonna square it first before we multiply by pi and get an area of 6.15 inches squared. That's gonna come back over here into our formula. Pressure is 950 divided by 6.15. And that will, oh my goodness, that's terrible. <laughs> back and forth. It's gonna be 154.5 PSI. I feel like we should draw some arrows. We started one, and then we went two, and then we wrote it down over here, three. Terrible. And we're going to wrap up force pressure area with this slide before we take it to the car. So the idea here is looking at the square on the left, how much pressure can this cylinder generate? Well, we've got a force in an area. We know that our pressure is going to be force divided by area. So we've got 200 divided by 2, which just equals 100 PSI. Easy peasy. What could we alter to increase the pressure created? So yeah, you could up the force, that would increase more pressure, but you know, maybe you're standing on something or applying as much force as you possibly could. So what else could you change about the configuration? You could decrease the area. Let's check it out. So we, let's say instead we had an area of one square inch. That's a bit tough to see. Suddenly we're gonna have 200 divided by one. So we halved the area, we doubled the pressure we created in the system. It's pretty awesome. So now we're even, you know, 200 pounds in is gonna create 200 PSI when the area of your piston face is one square inch. Can we do better? Sure. How about we make the area less than one? So a decimal. 200 divided by 0.5 is gonna give you 400 PSI. So if you want to get some pressure going that's greater than the force you put in, you're going to use a piston area less than one. Looking to the other end, if we have a system pressure and we're having it act on a remote, like uh, over at our brakes, we're having it act on a piston to, uh, to create a force, an output force. This situation is like, what's the force? We know that force is pressure times area. Here it's got 400 pounds per square inch, an odd face area, and that's going to give us 5024 pounds. So let's say we are at our front brakes and we want a really strong braking force. What can we do to make this stronger? We've already pushed our foot and created a system pressure. We're not going to like change that. We're not going to throw a pump in the system. We're going to mess with the size, the area of the piston face. So the bigger the piston, the more force you apply. Let's check it out. If we have the same system pressure, oh well, I'm not gonna double it because it's a terrible number already. 
I'm going to change it to 20 square inches and I've gone up to 8,000 pounds already. So we're going to use these two concepts in order to make awesome forces at our brakes. I just want to read through the steps, <laughs> the process of braking. So what happens when you apply the brakes, you put force into the system with your foot. You use the pedal lever, we'll talk about that in a second, to increase the force you can create with your foot. You use a brake booster on all modern, modern systems, which we're ignoring, <laughs> to even <laughs> increase that force more. Now, we're going into the fluid, so we're going to the master cylinder, we're going to a piston, and we're going to have a small piston, small as possible, because that will make a higher pressure. We're not altering, we've already maxed out the force. We wanna keep making a higher pressure. So we're gonna drop the area. We create this system pressure. Everywhere in the system has the same pressure. So at the front, at the back, right in front of the master cylinder, we have the entire hydraulic system has the same pressure. So we're sitting at, let's say the front brakes and we want to have an even bigger force coming out. So what are we gonna do? Big area, system pressure times greater area bigger force. Taking a quick look at our brake pedal. Your foot goes here. Oh, there's going to be, a, oh yeah, that's awesome. There's a foot. Okay. And we know that the, the pedal's attached somewhere. We can't see it. There's a pivot point right here, the fulcrum it's also called. And part of the way down, you're going to have the input rod to the master cylinder that goes right through the front of the cabin and into the engine compartment. And the two measurements you need to know what you can do are X and Y, whatever. It is the distance between the pivot and the pedal. And Y would be the distance between the pivot and the input rod. Okay. And you're going to do division here and that will tell you the mechanical advantage you get from your brake pedal. I'm just going to keep drawing because it's so awesome. So a quick practice on mechanical advantage of your brake pedal. We have situation one. I'm going to draw it. Here is the pivot or the fulcrum. Um, we're coming down like this. Yes, guy. And we have 11 inches from here to here. And then we have an input rod getting even better, going to our master cylinder. And we're going to say that it is two inches from here to here. I did take drafting, but obviously that was a long time ago. Okay, so what do we need to know? We're just going to take, well, always a big number, <laughs> divide it by the small number, and we're going to get 5.5. These are not inches, this is your ratio, your advantage, 5.5 to 1. How do we use that? Well, if we're applying 40 pounds of force here, I'm looking at question 2 now, how much is going to come out at the input rod going to the master cylinder? 40 pounds that I can put in with that mechanical advantage given to me by the configuration of the brake pedal. I'm delivering 220 pounds of force to that master cylinder. In order to find a brake system pressure, we're going to have to look at the force that we're, the total force that we're putting into that master cylinder and the area of the piston in the master cylinder to see what pressure we generate in the system. Okay, so we are applying 40 pounds of force to a brake pedal lever. They've already done this calculation for us. I know that the advantage is 2.5 to 1, so the force that's actually going to be delivered to the input rod of the master cylinder is 40 times 2.5, which equals 100 pounds. Excellent. Okay, now I need to do the system pressure. I know that pressure is force divided by area for my triangle or for my remembering. I've got a force, that's great, it's 100 pounds, but I don't have an area. However, I have a diameter. And remember, if you have a diameter, you always have an area. The area of a circle is pi r squared. Our particular circle has a diameter of 0.8, which means the radius is half of that, 0.4, and we're gonna square that. And that gives me 0 0.5024 square inches. Now I'm ready to go back to my pressure formula. Pressure is force. Now we see the 40, but remember we already multiplied it with the brake pedal advantage. So we're going to go 100 and we're going to divide it by a decimal. Look at this decimal. It's less than one. 
which means we know that our answer is going to be greater than 1. So we're going to get a higher system pressure from this force of 100 pounds. Do that math, I got 199 psi in the system. Exactly the same type of question, slightly more work. So we're breaking gently, we're only applying 10 pounds of force, um, and we're given some measurements on a brake pedal. So we see that the pivot to the pedal is 10 inches and the uh, pivot to the input rod is 2.5 inches. So right away I'm going to find out the mechanical advantage by taking 10 and dividing it by 2.5 and that's going to give me 4 to 1 as my advantage. So if my force in with my foot was 10 pounds at a 4 to 1 mechanical advantage, the force delivered to the input rod and ultimately to the master cylinder is going to be 40 pounds. Looking ahead to this question, I want a pressure. I want to figure out the system pressure and I see that I've got a master cylinder dimension that's a diameter. So before I write anything else down this time, I'm going to be like, okay, fine, I will find your area. Pi r squared, pi is still 3.14. Radius is half of 0.75, which is 0 0.0375. And that's what we're squaring first. Do that math, 0 0.442 inches squared. All right, now I want to find the system pressure. Pressure is equal to force divided by area. The 40 pounds divided by the 0 0.442 inches squared, and we're going to get 90.5 psi. Because we are not going to change the size of our front brake <laughs> calipers or our rear wheel cylinders, that means if we apply less force, we have less pressure coming out at the calipers we're also going to have less pressure and that makes sense because we're I mean less force pardon me coming out output force will be less and that makes sense because we are breaking gently we're not slamming it on with all the force we possibly can apply this one's going to be the whole enchilada we're bringing it all together so there's a picture because I want to do it a bit graphically which means I'm going to run in a room all over the place so bear with me so I've been given some specs about this system I know that this foot is applying 80 pounds and I see that the pedal to pivot is 10 inches, the input rod to pivot is 2 inches, 10 divided by 2. I'm getting a 5 to 1 advantage from that pedal, which means when I come in here, I have a force that is equal to 80 times 5, 400 pounds. So you're really slamming on this. Okay, I have a few areas in the system that were given to me. I have an area here. And at the front, where are the front ones? They're there. <laughs> I have areas here that are given to me. And at the rear, I have areas. So I'm going to take a moment and find all these areas. At the master cylinder, my area is pi times the radius squared. Same as last time, 0 0.442 inches squared. At the front caliper, my area. pi, 1.9 divided by 2 is r squared, and that will give me, well, 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 whatever it's down there, 2.83, not in my head, which is squared. And at my rear cylinders, this time I have 1.2 as a diameter, divide that in half to get a radius, 0.6, which is going to be squared, and I get 1.13 inches squared there. So three different areas. The first one, the master cylinder, I'm going to use that area to create a system pressure. Pressure is equal to force, this P here. So I'm creating the pressure first at the master cylinder. So that's 400 force divided by area divided by 0 0.442 and that will be 905 psi. So everywhere in this system when I create that kind of force coming in I have 905 psi of pressure. What changes is the area it goes through, so the output forces are different in the front and in the rear. Looking at the front here, we want to know the output force at the front brakes. What do we expect it to be more? Most of your braking happens in the front. 
we're going to take that system pressure that's going over to those calipers, 905 PSI, multiply it by the area of the caliper bore. And we have a mass of force, 2561 <laughs> pounds of force coming out at those front brakes. At the rear brakes, same system pressure, smaller cylinders, calipers if you have disc there too, doesn't matter, same, same. So there it is. When you have this much information, these specs, you can figure out all the force that's happening at different um, brake locations, front and rear. And one last time through, just with our words. So this one's nice, it's breaking it up into chunks. <laughs> it's doing everything in order. All right, so A, we wanna know for the information given how many pounds of force are being applied to the master cylinder piston. Okay, so we know we have the force that we gave, 60, and that we have this mechanical advantage from the brake pedal. So first thing, find the mechanical advantage. Be irritated that it's not nice, easy math. No guarantee. And we're gonna have about, and there'll be terrible rounding by me. All right, so that's our mechanical advantage. We applied 60 pounds with our foot. The pedal helped us this much, which means to the master cylinder, we are getting about 233.3 pounds of force. What's that gonna generate in the braking system? What's that pressure? So the force, we need to know the area of the master cylinder piston in order to figure out the system pressure. So we start with looking at, let's do a different color. That's our key thing right there. So our area of our piston face is going to be 3.14, always a circle. We're going to take 0.65 divided by 2 to get the radius. And that's going to give us a nice little area. Our pressure is force divided by area. The 233.3 we got in divided by the tiny piston area. And we're going to have a system pressure of approximately 703 PSI. Okay, what's next? What color next? Red. <laughs> okay. Oh, we don't really need it, but we'll go over here. Oh, this is sweet. I use the same number. <laughs> okay. So now we have an output location. So we're taking that system pressure and we're going over to the front of the car and it's pushing on the brake caliper. We need to know the area of the caliper piston. So same math. And we said last time it was 0.95 squared, and I believe that gave us 2.83 square inches. So I want to know the output force at the front brakes, those pads, what kind of force are they exerting on the rotors. We're going to have 703 pressure applied to an area this big, and that gives me an output force of about... 1,989 pounds. So not as much as last time, but we're not pushing as hard to start. We don't have as big of a mechanical advantage. So yeah, we're not going to have as many pounds of force. And our very last one, finish in purple. We're going to the rear, the area of the pistons for that cylinder. 1.225 divided by 2 it's a not super fun number, that's fine. And we get about 1.18 inches squared. And our force on those rear drum brakes, where the shoes are exerting on the drum, the force are exerting the system pressure multiplied by the area of the cylinder face. 830-ish pounds. So that's it. That's how you can take force equals pressure times area and do all this super fun stuff and solve a braking system.